have in front of me here a 4x4 four four, uh, high-end professional matrix from lab here. So basically this supports 4K, Ultra HD and also 3D picture quality. Um, so just the basic functionality on this is, so it's a 4x4 four four matrix, so as you'd expect, we can support the four different uh, HDMI inputs here, coming from, let's say, an Android device, uh, the Sky HD box, etc. And what we can do then is we can output it and, uh, in, in certain setups, work, control it independently from four different uh, points, four different TVs, which can also display the same or different uh, pictures. So in terms of the output on it, there's two ways we can send the signal. We can send it via a HDMI lead, which will just run the picture directly to a monitor. But the limitations of using HDMI is that, um, although we can view the picture, obviously in full HD, we can't actually control the matrix via the HDMI lead, nor can we indeed control the set-top box, we'll say that's working off, for instance, the skybox. So that's the first point. And then the second point, a uh, second way of doing it is that we could run it via CAT5 cable. So what we do here is we convert the HDMI signal into a CAT5 signal and then use this unit here, which is called the receiver, that goes along. We could buy up to four of these. They're offered as options along with the 4x4 matrix. And it'll come along and it'll actually convert the signal back to um, uh, HDMI. And it, but it gives the audit options of two great features. The first thing is that we can control the matrix so we can make a decision to use input one, two, three, or four using the remote control that comes with the matrix or with the, um, with the receiver. And the second thing is we can actually be able to control the sky box remotely um, and be able to change channels, etc. So from that perspective, it's very, very impressive. So, um, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'll just go through rough, uh, a quick explanation of what comes here uh, in the outer box and then what we'll do is we'll just give a demonstration of the key features on the unit. So it comes with a user manual. We also have a, um, a remote control which you can use for operating the box. We have a racking system here, so we'll just be rack mountable, which will obviously be very common with some of the high-end unit here. We might have a commons room in a, either a commercial or a, a high-end residential setting. And then what we have here is we have HDMI, uh, or we have power units here, 12 volts, um, uh, 5 amps. Uh, one of these is for powering the matrix, the other is for powering the POH, so we can actually work the sensors, etc., and have the whole thing powered directly from this unit. Um, we have an IR sensor here, which means that if we have this uh, rack mounted, we can actually put the unit away and just control the matrix via the remote control using the sensor here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to come around to the front of the unit here, and I'll just talk briefly about what we have in the front here. So now I'll just mention here that we have a demonstration video that comes with this. So the importance of the demonstration video uh, just gives how it'll actually work in here. But if this was powered on, we'd have a set of lights on top here, which would indicate uh, the outputs and on the bottom, the inputs here. So what we can do is we can decide that, you know, uh, all the outputs that have the same input are, you know, one will go to four, two will go to three, etc. We have the IR sensor here, which would obviously aim our remote at, and we have a power, so we have a power on or leave it in a standby position. And we also have the locking mechanism here where we can just actually come along and lock it to um, prevent changes. Um, what we have here then is we have uh, uh, how it's selected here. So we could come along and click output number one. Uh, we're going to choose input number three. Okay, and output number three, we could choose input number two, for instance. Um, what we then is just have a series of menu options and things like that, which we could effectively work in any case from the remote or from the front of the unit. If we uh, look at the power units then at the end, which I mentioned earlier. So what we're going to do here is just, you can see here on the side of the unit, you have your um, switches here, which I won't go further detail on, but we could do that, and we could just configure it for a certain type of whole thing. Um, in terms of the power input, we'd power the unit here via this power input, and we'd power the POH functionality over the CAT5 cables via here. If we wanted to mount this on a rack, and have it hidden away, we put in our IR sensor here, which allows us to control the whole matrix via the remote that comes with this unit. Uh, in terms of the LAN connection here, it's, so we can set this up and run through a network. Um, we have an RS-232 here. Normally we'd use this for the global unit here, and what we'd be able to do is be able to control the unit via uh, the RS-232 to change firmware and things like that. So on the input side then, with a total of four inputs here, uh, HDMI 1, 2, 3, and 4, which again could correspond to a free-to-air HD box, a sky box, a Blu-ray, and an Android device. And what we also have is here, uh, output sensors here, which we could use to run sensors uh, 
to the corresponding boxes that allow them to be controlled remotely and I'll go into a little bit more detail on that uh, later. And what we're going to do here then is we have four output modules here. One, two, three, four, each of them numbered. So we have an RS-232 here where we can actually log in via PC here or laptop directly onto it. Not normally used, but it is an option. And then in the simplest setup, what we'd have is a HDMI lead running from here directly to a TV. Normally with HDMI leads, the max run length is about 20 meters before you have to use start using repeaters and extenders. So what we could do in that particular thing is just run the cable over there. What we have here, we'll say, is we have a LAN cable, right? Uh, and this would be the other option, we'll say, where we could run a Cat5 cable out of here and we could run it. Now there's three key advantages that we could, for using, we'll say, the Cat5 cable uh, over the other one. Apart from the fact that maybe your, the premises you're working on will be pre-wired with Cat5 and maybe not with HDMI. I just want to pull these sensors in front here, the unit, which is the receiver unit, and the three key component parts on it. So what we could do here is, we'll say, with the HDMI lead, uh, the max run length is normally about uh, 20 meters or so before we use repeaters. With this particular unit here, what we could do is, we take this and we run it in, and we can run this for about 70 meters or so. So we're getting much longer runs straight away. And what we can do then is, we could take a HDMI lead from here, and we could run it directly to a TV. And now suddenly, any of the inputs that are on here, we could choose to have them output it directly to the TV. So now we're effectively in the simplest format. We're replicating what we're doing with the HDMI lead. So we're able to view what's on that particular input. But we can't control the matrix at this point, nor can we control, let's say, the skybox at the far end. If we want to come along, let's say, and control um, the matrix, what we do is we put this sensor on here, we would aim the remote control at it, and what we could do now is I could grab this remote and I could aim it and I could say input one, input two, three or four. So now we're controlling the matrix from here and it's working extremely well. But if we came along a little bit further and we wanted, we'll say, we had a skybox, we'll say, connected on input four and just said that was the input we had chosen here. What we could do is we could put this sensor in here. We could run this sensor and place it directly in front of the skybox. So if we imagine the skybox was mounted on the same rack or in the same area uh, where this matrix was, what we could do now is we could pick up our sky remote, aim it at the sensor, and just envisage what's happening here. The signal is going into the sensor, down through the Cat5 cable, coming back out here, and what it's doing is it's running that signal directly into the skybox. So we can change channels, etc., on the box remotely from this thing here. So you can see here, it's, uh, it's absolutely fantastic the flexibility it's giving. So it's offering a lot more, we'll say, than standard matrix do because of the remote access to it and also the fact that it's, you have the option of um, running it via you know, a very simple HDMI route or going with this route here. Now another big advantage of the way we're marketing this and it's been uh, marketed by Lab here is that with a lot of other high-end matrix, you have to come along and say, and you have to make a decision at day one that I'm going to buy the unit with all of the receivers with it, even though you mightn't have four TVs or you might have some that you want to feed directly via HDMI cable. So with the way we're marketing this, is it's possible to buy this particular unit with, we'll say, an option of adding one, two, three, or four of these modules on afterwards. And that's obviously a big advantage to it. Also within this range here, we have the four by four. We also have the eight by eight, which is a lot more, um, um, you know, output in terms of flexibility on it. But the general, we'll say, concept of how it works is exactly the same. So this really sits extremely well with our range of HDMI products, simply because it's a real premium professional product. It sits a bit above a lot of the other stuff um, that's in the range, but it complements it to give a, a professional end user um, an option of buying a unit like that. So this is it, anyway, an overview of the 4x4 4K matrix by Lab here.